Boom, Fun Hustler here, and today we're gonna to talk about why I don't feel like reselling. What's up guys and gals, Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my office. Today we're going to address kind of an issue that I see come behind the scenes a lot, a question to me, which is how do you stay in the game? How do you continue reselling when you don't feel like reselling? What are some of the tips and tricks that you have? And so in this video, I'm going to discuss with you guys those tips and tricks. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell next to the subscribe button because also I think maybe tonight or tomorrow I'm going to discuss with you guys my eBay strategy for the rest of the year and how I'm going to handle that. You're definitely going to want to tune into that. Also, if you hit the bell next to the subscribe button, it's going to allow you to see my videos as soon as they come up, which is really important because I plan to be in a couple towns this year that are going to be interesting. They're not Austin, Texas. You know, I'm going to be I'm more than likely going to be close to Bentonville, Arkansas at some point, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina at some point, San Diego for sure, uh, possibly even uh, Colorado as well. So when I go to those towns, I really want to do maybe a half day thrifting or something like that. And I'll, I would love to meet up with some of you guys and gals out there. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the subscribe bell next to it. That way you can kind of get all the news before it happens and that way you're not like, holy crap, you were in my town. What happened? You didn't tell me. So let's talk about why I don't feel like reselling. Look, I, I usually always feel like reselling, but uh, there's some times where I don't feel like reselling as well. This question behind the scenes comes often and sometimes I feel the same way. Let me give you five tips on what to do when you start feeling down about the resale game. I think number one is the most important thing. If you don't uncover the real issue of what's going on, you're gonna have a problem that persists all the time. So number one is a tactic called the five whys, right? And this is really important. I'm not gonna claim like I'm the one who came up with this because I'm not. I think I came out of a book called like Mind Hacking or something. I read it like not too long ago. It was a really, really good book. But there was a section, I believe it was that book, that talked about the five whys. And it wasn't even an original thought in that book as well. Like it was something that the book had noticed I believe someone in Japan, maybe the CEO of Toyota had done it. Um, and uh, when there was an issue, the CEO would, you know, ask himself and his employees why. Five times, right? Five times why. So if you're a reseller and you don't feel like reselling, ask yourself the first why. You know, why don't you feel like reselling? And answer that why. And go four more whys after that to get to the root of why you don't feel like reselling. Because a lot of times the root is a problem that's underlying and if you solve that problem, you solve a much larger issue, which is really, really important. Number two, you might not feel like reselling because of drive time. I get it. You know, sometimes, you know, I live in an okay part where I can do a four thrift store kind of run. It's relatively close to my house, but outside of those four thrift stores, I have to start thinking about driving to my other routes and my other thrift stores that I enjoy going to. And that drive sometimes, um, you know, kind of messes with me because sometimes there's traffic, sometimes there's you know, events in Austin, Texas, and it clogs up the freeways. And this is just one of those things that I have to deal with. Now, I know some people have it worse than I do, and some people have it way easier than I do. But nevertheless, drive time might be a really annoying thing that keeps you from, uh, you know, being pumped out about reselling. So my suggestion is, you know, make your drive time more productive. Even if you have to do a little bit of traffic or something like that, I like to think that traffic is the most unproductive thing that you can ever do in your entire life, but you can make it actually surprisingly really productive by listening to audiobooks, podcasts, or even keynote speakers on YouTube, motivational things on YouTube. Just get that stuff ready, you know, put it on a playlist, and then you can just kind of click through it with whatever's on your steering wheel or whatever. You don't have to look down your phone every two seconds. You know, you always have to stay safe when you're driving. But yeah, podcasts and audiobooks and motivational spoken word things are amazing. It really makes you almost time warp. You don't realize what's going on but you're taking in really good information that will hopefully propel you into achieving your goals later, things like that. So while it might seem unproductive or while the drive might seem boring, you can make it actually benefit you if you know how to do it. All right, got my list here. Number three, maybe you're not feeling like reselling because you're not finding anything lately. And this is pretty common. But here's the thing, as a reseller, you're not supposed to find things all the time. That's the point. You're supposed to find the inefficiencies where they occur. You're not supposed to be buying things left and right just because you can. You're supposed to be buying things left and right because they're arbitrage opportunities, essentially. But if you're not finding anything lately, it's a really good time to actually learn more. There's a really good chance there are things there that are worth, you know, good resale value, but you don't know about them, right? So they're just sitting there and someone else with knowledge is going to pick them up. They might not have knowledge of what you know, so you get some good things too, but you know, the more that you know is really, really important when you go into thrift stores because you're gonna see all sorts of different genres at thrift stores, genres of items, and it's your job to decode those items. 
and you get paid based upon how well you decode the items and how well you execute from you know the point of buying it to the point of selling it, packaging it, and letting it go to the customer. That's what's in your control. So if you're not finding anything good lately, then go back to the drawing board and learn as much as you can so that way when you progressively see another thrift store or another one and you're learning more, you start to realize, oh, there are actually more things that I never knew about that are in these thrift stores. And it's only a matter of time before you start finding things 90% of the time you go out, you know, instead of maybe 60% or 50% if you are feeling not like thrifting right now or reselling. Number four is interesting. Number four, you might not feel like reselling because prices are climbing and like every store out there. And I get it. It's happening here in Austin, Texas. Am I worried about it? No. Why? Well, let's go back to number three. Aggressively keep learning different items. Very, very important. I'm always like kind of pushing my own comfort zone when it comes to thrift stores and garage sales and things like that because you never know when a thrift store is going to learn a genre and just exploit it like Robert Graham shirts exploited fully, you know, all the way through here in Austin, Texas, for example. Most Polo Ralph Lauren collectible, you know, rugby looking things or jackets, like all that stuff, super high priced, Cole Haan dress shoes, like all that kind of stuff. Allen Edmonds priced up the wazoo in most thrift stores, but there are a lot of things that they don't catch. They only have a certain amount of people on the staff, you know, and a lot of those people aren't really on salary, so there's no real incentive to find everything, right? And they have a lot of things coming through processing. We live in a day and age where it's kind of cool to be a minimalist. It's, it, you know, the Mary Kondo thing came out on Netflix and people are thinning out their homes left and right. That means a lot of things are going to thrift stores and those people can't handle every single thing. So a lot of things go undetected. And as a reseller, generally, this is what we are good at is finding the things that go undetected and we resell them for more money. Now, there's another way that you can actually hedge against climbing prices, and that is using coupons, using codes, doing surveys that get you a certain amount of percentage off or maybe a dollar amount off your next item, and also paying attention to color tag days or certain days where a colored uh, you know, tag or thing that's like hanging on a shirt or whatever is actually corresponding to a discount. Number five reason why you might not like to resell right now or you're, you're kind of bummed out reselling is dead inventory, stale inventory or maybe unlisted inventory. I get it. It's really fun to buy things and to feel like you've got the best deal ever, but you have to understand that reselling is a 50-50 kind of equation. Really, it's like a third, right? It's a 33-33-34 kind of equation, but um, essentially, you have to buy the item, be smart enough to buy the item at a good price, right? Then you have to be smart enough to sell the item and do enough research to get the top price, right? Then you gotta be smart enough to actually pack it up properly to where it doesn't get a return. So really it's like three things in one, and most people are really good at number one, the buying process, but they kinda, it's not that they suck at like number two and number three, it's just that number two and three isn't as exciting, right? It's just not. Sure, it's exciting when you get a cha-ching on your phone, but like, some of the best part is just buying the item. Like, buying the item is great because you make almost all your money right there. So you have to buy super smart, try not to ever pay up for anything. And that's where you make big money and you have to carry out the entire process. So just remember that like reselling is really a three part process, buying, selling it and making sure it gets to your customer with no returns. That's basically it. So if you focus on the number two and number three, because you're probably already good at number one, let's face it, you'll learn to love reselling for really what it is. And that's primarily one of the reasons why I pre-box all my stuff too, because I don't want anything to stress me out when someone buys an item for me. I don't want to locate it, try to find it. Like, it's pretty easy. I know exactly where it is in the garage. And that's personally what keeps me going in the game, right? I basically um, did one of the harder things to do with step three or maybe step two, which was basically pre-boxing it. But in the end, it turned out to be something enjoyable because I still love reselling to this day, you know? So give it a consideration. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. And I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustle video. Take it easy. Goodbye.